All right, so what we're going to do is go ahead and open up your web browser and log into your Twitter profile. So take a moment to log into Twitter. Yes. Did you grade our assignment for the paper already? Yeah, okay. uh, this morning. Yes, um, I was kind of want to remove some stuff that I could. It's okay, you already saw it. So. Well, check your grade, and then depending on what your grade was, if you need that to be regraded, you can then check with me. Okay. But I think you'll be you'll be okay. So um, let's go ahead and log into. Twitter. So did anyone, anyone watch the, uh, or catch the Super Blood Moon? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it was right up there in the sky. It was hard to miss. We'll see another one since 2033. Yeah. So, that was pretty fun. Did anyone tweet about it? The Super, the Super Blood oh, Moon. Yeah. Yeah, you, you need a good camera. To really I see it. Everything becomes a meme nowadays. Yeah. So, um, the the thing that we'll do. So here's what. Here's probably the best photo you'll see of the super moon ever, right here, shot by some guy. But anyway, um, the. Uh, the the thing that I want to show you is okay. So if we follow accounts, some of them are going to follow you back, but some of them aren't, and it's going to then be annoying once you're making all of these following and you're not getting too many followers. So I'm not sure if I mentioned it very much in the day that we talked about Twitter, but if you take a look at your following and follower count, the better thing that you want is that you have more followers than you are following. So in my example right here on one of my accounts, I'm following 70 accounts and I have 110 followers. So if I had, let's say, 500 that I am following and I've only got 100 followers, that's not a very good ratio. That shows that maybe I'm trying too hard to get followers and that might turn off people from following you. So, but I said, if you follow accounts, some will follow you back. That is true, but now I'm going to introduce this website where it'll help us check very quickly. Okay, I followed 40 accounts, but how many of those accounts actually followed me back? And then you can quickly unfollow them and check other stats. So make sure you've logged into Twitter. And then let's go to this website right here. It's manageflitter.com. Manage Flitter, F L I T T R, manageflitter.com. So make sure you're logged into Twitter first and then go to manageflitter.com. And on the top right, you'll see sign in. So click on sign in. What this will do is ask you to confirm your Twitter account, and that'll bring you back to Manage Flitter. So this is like a, one of the many modern websites where it asks you to first confirm with Twitter or with Facebook or whatever. You're not giving your password to Manage Flitter. You're logging in to Twitter. Notice, I've got the Twitter logo right there and the address the address bar says twitter.com. So I'm logging in. I'm confirming on Twitter. I confirm my password on Twitter, and then that then tells Manage Flitter, yes, this is the right person. Let them through. So you see this more often. You have a sign in through another company, and then it will uh, authorize you for one other company. So I'm going to try to log in on that, and that should take me back to Manage Flitter. It might pop up with a podcast, so I'm going to close that. And then it pops up with some scary numbers right here. Business, $49 a month. Pro, $12 a month. And free, that's the one we want. So um, go ahead and click on the freebie one, the one on the right, select plan freebie. So 
what it's going to do, it's going to analyze your account. And it's going to check your followers and your following, and then it may pop up with a few suggestions, track keywords, power post. So um, I don't believe most of these powerful features are part of the free one. So just click the close button on the top right. Okay, so here's the point. We get Manage Flitter, and at the top we've got Manage, Search, Analytics, blah, blah, blah. On the left side, we've got this menu. Not following back, no profile image, not English, inactive, and other ones. This is a way for you to check your followers, uh, specifically those that you have followed and they never followed you back. So here it's showing me um, not following back, so all of these accounts here. I follow these accounts, but they haven't followed me back. So obviously, maybe I'm not going to get followed by, I don't know, Southwestern College or, you know, famous accounts and stuff. But if you used the, the tactic of following a bunch of accounts, here you can then quickly see how many followed you back. If a person didn't follow you back, then you can... Um, you can select the unfollow button right there. So now you unfollowed them. Does it tell you it's following you or not following? Oh, not following. This is not following. Yeah. Yeah. And then so then the point of that is this ratio if I have a really high ratio that I'm following, if I'm following 500 and I've only got 20 followers, someone would see that and say, nah, they're not, they're not an, an account to follow because unfortunately, or fortunately, popularity breeds popularity. So if you seem to have a popular account, more people will easily click the follow button. If you don't have that many followers, people might not be that interested in following you. Also, if they see, well, why is this person following 500 accounts and they only have 20 followers? Well, we're using the tactic to try to get more followers. And with Manage Flitter, we can then quickly see, these people are not following me, so unfollow. I can go over to No Profile Image. So here's, the, here's some that I'm following that have never updated their profile. And so you could unfollow these. I wouldn't unfollow the ones with no profile right away. Maybe they never got around to it, but um, this is also another another spot to check. You know, usually the accounts that don't have um, their own icon means that you know they haven't. They have maybe they're not a good account, or maybe they just haven't gotten around to it. So I usually skip that one. The non-English ones, I don't think that one's that useful either, because you might be connected with people that are usually tweeting not in English. But maybe sometimes while well, you're getting you're following accounts that are in Russian. Well, I can't read that, so you can decide to f change that. Here's a good one. Inactive. You, you followed accounts, and this will tell you these people haven't tweeted in a while. So August 19th, May 27th, August 19th. So I might have followed these people in the beginning for whatever reason, and then they haven't updated anything in a long time. July 10th, July 7th. So these might be a bunch of accounts that I might want to unfollow because that's going to hurt me. If I'm following a lot of accounts and they haven't tweeted in a while, well, unfollow them to, uh, to help that. So let's see who gets the chopping block. Michael, too bad. Francisco, too bad. Carlos. Hmm, you need to tweet, Carlos. You haven't tweeted in a while there. Uh, Berenice, too bad. David Rodriguez. So, right there. you can um, you can uh, see who hasn't tweeted in a while and unfollow them. But you wouldn't know this. You know the Twitter the Twitter website itself might not be the best to tell you some of these things. There's a bunch of websites out there that tap into your Twitter account to give you more features. This is a good one here also. Fake and spam accounts. Let's see. Fake following. Well, the fake followers is a pro feature, and I'm not going to pay $12 a month. But 
the, the free one, let's see, fake following. None of them are fake, that's good. Following ratio, again, high ratio, low ratio. So some of you at the moment have a high ratio, but I'm sure you'll, you'll get it in line there. Low ratio is good, so a few people have, a, have the good one. Uh, low ratio, if you hover your mouse over any of these, it should tell you, shows all the people who have more people following them than they follow. So you want a ratio like this. You want a ratio where more people are following you than you are following them. You might feel bad about un unfollowing people, but if you're using Twitter, for business, it's perfectly fine to unfollow accounts that are that are not being active, that haven't tweeted in a while. Um, you know, any accounts that are not beneficial to you. We can look at talkative and quiet. Well, maybe an account tweets too much. That could be a reason to unfollow. Or maybe an account doesn't tweet enough. That could be a reason to follow, to unfollow. So what is the high ratio, the bad ratio, the low ratio? The high ratio are accounts that are following a lot of accounts, and they don't have too many followers. Oh. And the low ratio, the good one, is that uh, there's a, those are accounts that have a lot of followers more than they're following. So you get a lot of features for free, and there's some paid ones, but some paid features, but you'll probably be fine with the free versions. For example, influence, high influence, low influence. So maybe you followed some accounts just to get a follow back, but then it turned out they never followed you, and you check here they're a low, they're a low influencer. Well, then it's not that worth it to, to keep following them. You can just click the X on the top right there, Jose. You don't need that screen. Uh, let's see, never unfollow, follow. Those are pro features. You have to pay for that, and I wouldn't. But those are that you can lock accounts that you'll never um, want to unfollow. Muted, everyone you follow, power mode. With this free version, I believe you have a limit. I don't remember what the limits are, but right now it's told me that I've unfollowed six so far. There's going to be a limit. It's if I... 100, 100? Yeah. Okay. Now we know. So then tomorrow, we can unfollow 100 more. Let's see. Analytics are all pro features. Search, you've got some basic search. Engagement, power post. Let's take a look at this engagement power post. This is supposed to tell you what's the best day and time to post to reach more of your followers. So up there on your engagement. And the cool thing is, once we once you look here, you can connect your Facebook and your LinkedIn so that when you post something here, will automatically go to your Twitter and your LinkedIn and your Facebook so that you're not trying to manage all of them separately and wasting time. So for me it's telling me apparently Tuesdays at noon is the best day for me to post. I can change it of course. Let's see, I'm going to find something interesting to share.
Oh. Yeah, that little box right there lets you lets you uh, post anything. And I'm going to schedule it. So that's going to be posted for me tomorrow at noon. And it says it's pending. So the more I use it, then I can get also suggested. And this is one of the many tools that will help us use Twitter more. And like I said, uh, my cup, my two favorite social networks are Twitter and Google Plus. Um, and for marketing purposes, I think Twitter would be more effective for people. Um, Google Plus needs for you to really take advantage of communities, and there might not be a community for your particular product. But Twitter has that powerful search feature, and so the more you use it and followers that you get and all of that, things like this will help you. So for example, here it's not a good idea to tweet at 4 in the morning in my account. That's when people are less paying attention. But it seems to be on Tuesday at noon. What about you guys? What does it say on yours? Is any... What's that? Tuesday. Well, what time? Noon. Tuesday at noon? That says it up on the engagement button on the top. Yeah. Hmm. And so you can see the cycle here of time. Tuesday at 9 p.m. seems to also be popular. If you then go over to the dashboard tab on the dashboard button, you'll see more activity. Uh, how many follows you've gotten on the past 24 hours, how many unfollows. I don't want to look at that, it bums me out. How many unblocks and blocks, activity timeline. So I saw it somewhere. Where did I see that? Where are you seeing it? It says, would you like your public Google Plus posts to automatically appear on Twitter? Join 46,000 well, Google channels. Yeah, so... I my Facebook into the Twitter to follow with my name. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I did it. No <laughs> I didn't know until one time. Yeah, it's pretty useful to link your profiles together. That way you only post on one, maybe, and then it goes to the other ones. That's useful, but sometimes you need to put the right message on the right network. Because Twitter, it's 140 characters. I can write a whole essay in Google Plus or Facebook. People are not going to read it, but you could write a whole essay on Facebook or Google Plus, but you're not going to have that much space on Twitter. So maybe it is a good idea to have a nice shorter direct message on Twitter and have a longer one on Facebook and have a medium one on Google+. But at the very least, if you want to hit all the networks, you can use a tool like Manage Flitter and it will post to all your networks. I'm sure someone had a great idea when they took this photo, but I don't get it. Why is everyone pointing at their screen? Is this stupid clicking, so I have to go to the Okay, let us do it. I should have read it, because that doesn't make sense. If I just look at the pictures, like, are they pointing at... What are they pointing at? But uh, I don't have the money for other people to do my work for me. All right, so that's one of the net, one of the networks I wanted to men to mention that works well to connect with your with your um, Twitter account. Manage Flitter. Now you have to remind me. Did I mention in this class something called Twitter Fall? Was it in an assignment? Twitter, or Twitter Fall. Twitterfall dot com. Yes. That's for searching, like searching events and stuff like that. That's what I 
You said it's for the third but, term. Right? But did I talk about it in your other class? In the other no, class or this class? No, we just gave, gave us the link on the... On the assignment? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, if just to mention it briefly again, twitterfall.com. So I'm going to go to twitterfall.com, click sign in with Twitter, authorize. And then that will um, be a way to search. I'm going to search the term cookies. And what that will do is it's going to show me um, just a, a list of tweets that are happening right now with that keyword. My dream job is to be the guy who writes fortunes for fortune cookies. So if I was a company and I was looking for accounts to connect with with a keyword, this is just another way to do search. Twitter has a pretty good search feature, but I kind of like this one because it's, you know, it's like a waterfall of tweets and I've got some settings that I could set over there on the side. can do presentation mode. So let's think about this, that I've got, a, I've got an event going on. And in the event I'm having every, or I'm asking everyone to use a certain hashtag. So I could search for that hashtag on Twitter fall, set it on presentation mode, and then on a TV in the corner, all the tweets are appearing there. This, of course, you know, is live Twitter, and just like live TV, things might happen that you don't expect. So hopefully, no one is abusing the um, the hashtag. So this would be pretty useful. Also, maybe if you're seeing the, um, if you want to see the, the hashtags of a show for doing the live, um, doing the live tweeting. And so the, when you use Twitter fall and you search, it's not only going to give you results, it's also if you hover over a tweet, if you hover over any tweet, you get actions on the right side, the little arrow. You hover there, then you can quickly favorite, reply, retweet, report, and follow the accounts. So because Google Plus has the communities, which I think are really useful, the closest are Twitter hashtags. And if you use a tool like Twitterfall, you can search people using the hashtag to connect with them um, so similar to Google Plus. Did you use a new tweet to start getting flow connection? A different keyword. You can, you can search different keywords there on the side. Oh. So uh, you can mix, you can put more than one, although if it, I think if you put more than one, it's going to mix up too many, too many tweets, so I just usually use one.
Okay, any questions on Manage Flitter or Twitter Fall? Yeah, exactly, because the good and the bad of Twitter is that it's so open. It's good because you could reach a lot of people, but it's bad because there's no communities. You know, Google Plus has those communities which I think are very useful. So some tools like this will just help you find more content and more people to connect with. So let's say I have a uh, a company, a bakery, and I'm trying to get more people to go to my bakery. I could look up the hashtags or the keywords of my competitor's brand, and this is all public, so if someone is tweeting like, I love you Oreo cookies, well, I could go in there and see someone that tweets that, and then tweet them and say, oh yeah, what about this cookie? And then show them like a much better one from my company. Or if someone is tweeting negatively about like they had a bad experience with Delta Airlines, you know, you can search the keywords Delta Airlines and, and negative. And so you and you're a competitor airline or something, you could be trying to scoop up the, uh, the people that are having a bad experience in that other company for your own company if you can give them something positive. Like here's someone that just said, I wish there was a way to get junk food delivered to me, a big chocolate cake or chocolate chip cookies. Well, if I'm a bakery company, there's someone that I should start tweeting to because, you know, I might get a follow, I might get a retweet. Even better, maybe they'll buy some of my cookies later. <laughs> 